We are starting recording now. <laughs> and I will give space to Francesco at this moment. So hello, everybody. My name is uh, Francesco. Welcome to you all. This is uh, the first of the uh, five webinar. Uh, we as uh, Role for Change partners, uh, we will uh, deliver uh, And they are about uh, role playing game, of course and uh, how to use it on uh, educational field. So uh, first, just a few words about me. I'm uh, uh, an educator. I've been holding uh, a role-playing game laboratory uh, since three years. And uh, during the pandemic, the pandemic we kept on uh, uh, role-playing uh, virtually uh, with uh, virtual tabletops platforms. And uh, we realized uh, how, uh, um, how much, how great it was to uh, the educational result, results. So uh, we decided to, um, I decided to propose uh, the theme of role-playing in the, uh, this project. And we start working on the, this project with uh, the colleague of mine of uh, uh, Cooperativa Meta. And uh, so Role for Change started uh, from that idea and uh, the, uh, the idea that uh, the, role, the role game can be used in uh, educational aspects and in fields uh, with great results. So I don't know if uh, Vojta wants to say something about you. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Vojta. I'm a facilitator, I'm an educator, I'm a trainer, and uh, one of the great things which I'm doing is that I'm also um, actively using LARP for education. Actually, right now I'm somewhere in Wales, where we are running 10 days project using LARP. So I'm here a little bit in the field conditions, I'm partially in my costume, as you uh, might see. Uh, I hope that my internet connection is going to be good enough. Uh, there is uh, our colleague Ilias, who is here as a technical support. Maybe Ilias also want to introduce himself. Hello, everyone. Yeah, we'll be uh, supporting the technical aspect of this webinar and the next ones, probably. And I'm very glad uh, to have everyone here today. And I will ask Ilias to give their second slide. Sure. Because I would like to also somehow introduce you the context Online. of all role for change. No. Uh, so, Role for Change is TA2 project. TA2 projects are funded by Erasmus Plus. By this, we would like to express our gratitude to people who decided to. Amore, chiudi la porta, per favore. Ciao, 50 persone. Francesco, your uh, microphone is on. Yes, <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> Uh, so we are grateful to Erasmus Plus to funding this. That's also the reason why we can be doing it when you can be accessing this for free. Uh, KA2 projects are focused on creation of educational models. So in our case, we are creating mod models that are, that are focused on teaching of usage of the LARP and role-playing games in education. And we are going to be creating uh, several specific models. So uh, next slide, please. First of these modules will be booklet with specific LARP and role-playing activities which you can be using for education. It will be free to download from the internet so you can just take it and use whatever you're gonna like. Second modules are the webinars which we are delivering right now. Third model will be training course which is going to happen from 5th to 11th of September in Italy and you can apply for. Uh, basically, what we will be explaining you in the webinars, in this training course in Italy, we will start to practice, put it in reality. And finally, uh, we are creating educational platform uh, where we are going to collect all the materials from the things which we have created so far. So you most probably already know the domain, it's roleforchange.eu and through this uh, platform you could uh, sign yourself, or register yourself inside of this webinars. For now, we are showing only very little part of the platform. It will be much, much bigger. Uh, I will give a word to Elias now for a minute. Yes, uh, hello again from my side. Um, 
we're going to, I'm going to tell you about the, a bit about the outline of the webinar. So as uh, Francesco said, there's going to be five of them. Um, they will be happening every two weeks, except the, the last one, which is going to happen after three weeks after the previous one. So in the webinars, we're going to cover the following topics. The first one, which is uh, the one that we're having today, is about uh, what is LARP and RPG, so a general introduction to the subject and uh, how to use them in education and non-formal education more spe specifically. Then the next one is going to be about um, um, non-formal education in general. Uh, but yeah, to, I, I will stick to today's uh, webinar, which is uh, yeah, going to be about how to implement a LARP and an RPG, how to facilitate uh, an activity or a whole day of them or a whole project and how to keep it safe. Um, how to do it online, as we're doing at the moment. And um, in, the, in the end, in the last one, we're going to have uh, an opportunity to discuss with the experts of this project and um, also uh, experts outside of this project. Yes, these meetings, these webinars are going to be happening every two weeks. Uh, there will be new experts in every webinar. Some of them you will see in more than one. And uh, you will have an assignment, which is going to be a voluntary assignment. Like we are very uh, much, we will support you and we, we would like you to do them, but they are still voluntarily. So yes, there will be an assignment after each session, which you can share in the Facebook group that in case you haven't joined, um, I realized that in the first email that uh, we've sent you, for the welcoming, uh, the, uh, the link of the Facebook group wasn't working properly. Now it's fixed and you've received it in, the, in a new email that I sent you today. So please, after this webinar or even now, go join the Facebook group of, uh, of this community that we will be creating because we want to create a community of people that are interested in LARP and want to implement LARP activities. So yeah, it would be very, very nice to have a community of uh, us in there and uh, yes in the end of each webinar we we would like to make space for a q a questions and answers um this we were we're planning to do it from uh, 15 to 30 minutes per webinar but uh, we're not sure how we will do time wise because uh, we are planning to have these webinars for 90 minutes each in case it takes less or more we'll see we'll see how it uh, we manage it uh, that's it from my side, Poita. Thank you. I will ask you for the next slide. So this much was for the general introduction about the project. Let's take a look what is going to happen during today's uh, webinar. Uh, first of all, we will talk a little bit in general about what are games. Then we will take a look into the role-playing games specifically. Then to live action role-playing games. And then I'm going to give space to Francesco, who is going to bring you some uh, practical examples on the spot. Um, let's see how we can make it a little bit interactive. We did this small research with you during the registration phase, but I'm curious, how many people who are in here already know what, are, what is RPG, what is a role-playing game? You can use this like hands up, which is uh, in Zoom. I hope that everybody knows where to find it. Okay. We are having some reactions, some responses, but the bigger, bigger part of the people who are present don't have that many experiences. Okay. Good to know who we have on the spot, what we are working with. Mm, good. So uh, I'm also curious how it's going to go if I will invite you to turn on your microphone and share your opinion, because the first question is, and I will ask Ilias to put their next slide. What is a game? Any idea about what is a game? Somebody who would like to share. Playful attitude can be okay. Uh, 
You can here? also uh, write on on the chat as somebody is doing if you want, guys. Playful attitude, fun activity. Some other ideas about what is a game? How does it work? Interactive activity, okay. An activity with rules, challenges, and reward, but for fun. Okay, now we are getting to more specific things. Having fun within a specific time frame. Very good. Some other ideas? An exercise. Okay. That's interesting. <laughs> yes. Okay, Ilias, I will ask you for the next slide. Yeah, uh, what we know about uh, play and game in general. First of all, this field is still under research. There is more opinions, more different ideas. It's not like we are having definite answer. But what we know is that game is very natural, not only for humans, but also for animals. Animals, through their growing up, they are playing with each other and they are learning through playing. And also kids are having it in a very similar way. They are uh, doing different games and they are, play, uh, they are learning how the world is uh, working, how their bodies are working just through having fun around them. Uh, and very early in a children's life, we can see that they start to play pretend, play pretense. This is bringing us closer to this topic of role-playing activities. Ilias, next slide, please. Yeah, uh, so for example, my niece, she is uh, four years old now, and she is constantly pretending that she is Elsa from uh, Frozen Kingdom. She saw it, she loved it, now she is Elsa all around my sister's house. When I was a kid, I used to be not playing uh, Frozen Kingdom. I was playing that I'm a ninja, that I'm a Celtic warrior, that I'm a Sandokan. You can put their next slide. And uh, this, this is an actual photo of Voita pretending to be Sandokan. Yeah, I used to be very sexy when I was five years old. <laughs> um, so we know that there is something very, very attractive about pretending to be someone else. It's very natural, it's coming to us. Um, if you are wondering why, what is the reason behind it, I will ask Ilias for the next slide. You can just to check with somebody who, who likes role-playing insects. Uh, it can be very interesting uh, discussion uh, for you. Mm, but uh, this is all more about the play. Play is fun activity, entertaining activity, something what's uh, coming very naturally to us. But then there is also a game. And game is a little bit more specific, more concrete. Please, next slide. Game has a lot of characteristics, but I have chosen the two, two most important characteristics from this. And it is a uh, game is happening inside of a specific time and space. And a game has a specific rules. So suddenly it's not anymore about pretending that I am a princess Elsa and running through an apartment. It's not pretending that I'm a plumber but it's about being a plumber who is jumping over the barrels in order to save the princess. You can see this uh, screen down there. This is from the, one of the oldest Mario games when he was fighting King Kong or whatever, and he was saving this uh, little princess. It was happening in specific space, specific time, uh, with specific goal, with a specific role. Mm. And we know that uh, these like role-playing games are very, very old. Already like uh, 200, 500 years ago, there has been game when kids were playing uh, catch me if you can. There was one person who is catching the others, but it, it wasn't the kid who is catching them. It was uh, Baba Yaga. It was evil witch. And if this evil witch is going to catch the other kids, she's going to eat them. There was this completely unnecessary elements 
which was making it more fun for people, more engaging, more entertaining, bringing something, we don't know exactly what, which is spicing the thing up. So this is about uh, role-playing games in general, but in this webinars, we are going to be talking about uh, something even more concrete. Please, next slide. Oh, yeah, I mean, I had uh, a thing uh, just about this. Um, there's in English, uh, the, the, there's a, an interesting difference between the word play and game. Play in particular can be um, can be a lot of meaning related to play. Play an instrument or, uh, I don't know, play music uh, or play, have, having fun. But uh, um, in particular, the differences between uh, actual playing is uh, semantically a, a bit more related uh, without, uh, not, not necessarily without the rule, with the rules. I mean, uh, uh, kids can play with the stick, uh, can, can play with their rocks or uh, sand castles or whatever. But a proper game, as Ilya, as Boita said, is uh, also about some other aspects and uh, the rules or the time and space are, uh, of course, uh, one of the main ones. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for pointing this out. Um, in this context, we are going to be talking about the so-called tabletop RPGs, uh, tabletop role-playing games. This specific thing is like the roots of the thing are coming from the 19th century, but uh, it was fully developed in the 70s in the last century. And it uh, became very quickly, very popular. Tabletop RPGs are combining some uh, basic things from the board games and some basic things from the storytelling. And the easiest way how to introduce it to you uh, will be probably from the following video. Please, next slide. Yeah, one more. Yes, this is the short clip from the Stranger Things. Most probably you had seen it. And on this example, you can see the how tabletop role-playing games looks typically. There is one person who is uh, responsible for the, okay, in most of the cases, there is one person who is responsible for leading the story, so-called dungeon master. And then there are other players. Other players are choosing their own characters. The characters oh. can be, uh, warrior the character can be mage depending on the story they are playing it can be also a detective it can be a space warrior whatever people are going to imagine and inside of the game they are having a uh, specific rules they are following for tabletop role playing very often these rules are huge they can have hundreds of pages but there also exist some versions which are having only two pages and it's uh, based on the imagination. People are just sitting, they are describing their ideas and they are creating this shared group vision of the story which is happening. And it is still a game because it is still following a specific rules. It is happening inside of the specific time and space boundaries. And it could get, it can get very engaging. As you had seen in the video, the kids got very much emerged in it at the moment. So somehow they can even lose the idea that they are here and now in, the, in their smother basement, but they can really start to feel like they are somewhere else when they really go um, immersed in the story. And even though that it seems that this is uh, mostly kids activity, a reality says something different. Around me at this moment, I know at least about three groups of adults. And by adults, I mean also people who are having families and kids who are meeting every week or every, every two weeks. And they keep playing this type of games. It also got so popular that uh, there are some uh, people who are making money through it. They are shooting video out of their campaign, out of their play. They are putting it online and people are paying for the opportunity to watch them. There is several ways how to make the whole 
experience of playing tabletop RPG more immersive. One of them is uh, using music on the background. There is opportunity to put some candles inside of the rooms, maybe putting on some smelly stick. And very often, players want to put on themselves some costumes. Costumes uh, or the whole setting depends on the type of the story they are playing. Next slide, please. So uh, these stories can be very different. It started with the fantasy setting with the dragons, dwarves and warriors, but it also went to the setting from the so-called world of darkness when we are dealing uh, mostly in the current time with the vampires, werewolves, magicians. There is very popular science fiction setting Shadowrun Another very popular fantasy setting is Pathfinder. Maybe you have heard about Call of Cthulhu, which is coming from the writer Lovecraft. And also Star Wars is one of the most popular setting for playing RPGs. And there is hundreds of more. There is also some uh, national mutation. I'm coming from the Czech Republic. In Czech Republic, we are having at least five, six uh, tabletop RPGs, which have been created strictly for the Czech audience. Anyway, it was just a matter of time when people um, wanted to have something more. And it wasn't enough for them to sit around the table with the costume of a wizard. And they started to play the wizard in a real life. This is a moment when the LARP, live action role playing, had been born. And it happened approximately in the end of the 70s of the last century. Next slide, please. Yeah. So basically, people stopped sitting at the, at the table, but they took their costume, they went out to the forest or to the field and started to act out their stories. And it was very similar to the theater, but there was no audience. The only audience were the player themselves. So they were acting out for themselves. And it was still a game because they still have a specific rules on... Um, how they can be interacting with each other. Uh, different rules for the battle have been created, different rules for the magic. Once again, there is endless number of them depending on the type of game they are playing. On the next slide, we are going to compare what's the difference between role playing, tabletop role playing and the LARP. Yeah. So from the most, uh, from the biggest differences, when we are um, having typical tabletop RPGs, they are having really complicated rules. It can be hundreds of pages. While LARPs uh, are much easier, they can still be complicated, but the rules are, um, yeah, much shorter, much more easy to comprehend. RPGs are usually happening in a small group from, uh, let's say, one to seven people. I'm saying one because there are some uh, tabletop RPGs which can be played also by one character, even though mostly it's at least two. Group which is bigger than seven players is already really hard to handle because inside of this group, everybody wants to have their chance to do something. And uh, they start to kind of um, take space and time from each other. In contrast, LARP can be really big. It can happen with uh, four players. I have actually found a LARP which was only for two players, but there are also LARPs which can have 500 players or even more. So it can be already a massive event. And in RPGs, uh, tabletop RPGs, the immersion into the story is happening mostly in the head of the people. They are having their shared imagination. While in LARP, this immersion into the story is supported with the costumes, with the setting, with the props. So mostly it's really dragging people inside of the story. Actually, if people doesn't let themselves to be dragged inside of the story, if they will be playing a warrior and they will have X in the right hand and their mobile phone in the left hand, they will be kind of breaking the whole experience for the other people who are playing the activity with them. Next slide, please. There is uh, many... Before moving to the next slide, if I may add uh, just please. a quick thing. 
to what Voita said. Ilias, the, the previous slide, please. Oh, thank you. I just wanted to add a very simple thing that uh, role-playing games, the tabletop, uh, the, the standard role-playing game, let's say, uh, relies a lot on the theater of the mind. What, um, that's why uh, it happens uh, in the head, because imagination comes from our head, of course. But uh, the point is that um, complicated rules, uh, because in the role-playing games, the manual try to, uh, to give the rules to every aspect of the life and the imagination. I mean, uh, um, fantasy setting could be set of a pirate ship or, uh, I don't know, uh, killing monster because of uh, bounty hunters stuff or uh, uh, warriors or whatever. A lot of different, very different situations. So the rules are made to, uh, to give the coordinates. And uh, that is why normally in role-playing games, uh, there are so many rules uh, generally. Because, as Boita said, uh, some other role-playing games are very smooth and very agile. But in contrary, in the LARP, it's more about the, the body that is involved. And in that case, uh, uh, of course, there are rules, but uh, we don't need as many rules and new role-playing games because uh, we use props like fake weapons, uh, and why we use them like a sword. Uh, uh, there's no need for the rules of that. You just simple use it. And uh, it's, uh, it's easy as that. So that's why in LARP, normally there are less rules rather than in role-playing games because imagination needs to be coordinated, needs to be framed a bit. And LARP, on the contrary, doesn't need it as much as it. Thank you. Thank you, Francesco. Uh, so about different types of LARP, there can be plenty of them. It mostly started with the LARPs which were focused on the action, when people created for themselves uh, shields and swords which have been softened so they don't hurt each other, and they went to recreate the massive battles. Uh, this type of LARP is still very popular, but it's not the only one. Uh, some people prefer science fiction. Next slide, please. So for recreation of science fiction, people got inspired by Mad Max, by post-apocalyptic movies. They started to use airsoft guns and they started to shoot each other. Uh, next, uh, next slide. Culture is also very uh, influential. So Harry Potter was very popular phenomenon, even though the popularity is dying. And there are LARPs which are recreating the feeling. What is it like to be inside of the school of the Hogwarts? Actually, I'm uh, in, as I'm right now doing the project, one of my participants just came back from the LARP, which was created on uh, motives of Harry Potter setting. There are also some LARPs which are recreating historical events. Next slide, please. This is a picture from the LARP Leg Legion. It's a Czech LARP, and it is recreating the experience of the Czech Leg Legioners, which were battling during the First World War in Russia. It's, I believe, five days LARP when people are having historical costumes, they are having historical sleeping bags, and they are actually sleeping outside during the winter. So it is happening in quite a rough condition. This all is adding to their unique experience. In this specific LARP, there is, of course, uh, several rules, but also the characters are scripted. So they are somehow, it's not like the person is creating their character from scratch but uh, the character has been written for them by someone else. So it's much closer to the theater. In the theater, you are also having somehow scripted character. The difference from theater is that in theater, you know what's going to happen from beginning to the end. In LARP, you are having just a motivation of the character and the way how you are interacting with other players is creating the plot for you. Basically, anything can happen. Next slide, please. So this is truly me. Uh, this is this is a LARP which happened uh, maybe six You're beautiful years ago. Boy, no? I know, thank <laughs> you. Uh, I was playing a pirate 
and we played this LARP on a boat in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, so three days fully immersed in the LARP activity. Next slide. And there is also many other types of LARP. Uh, most, of the, most of the LARPs I have mentioned right now took the whole day or maybe even several days, but there are also much short LARPs, so-called chamber LARPs. They can take from one to six hours uh, and they are focused on many different things. For example, romance, I have played LARP when I spent two hours in the coffee, a coffee house, and I was talking uh, with a girl I have met about our fictional relationship. We had scripted characters, our relation, relationship wasn't working, and we were just trying to talk it out. And it was a great learning about the partner's communication for me. I have played LARP, when we, which was purely focused on the comedy, no bigger intention behind it. We just wanted to have a good laugh. So for three hours, I was pretending to be Hercules. Uh, I have also played LARP, which was focused on the drugs, uh, where we have been playing teenagers and one of the teenagers had died in the end because of the overdose. So it was a great education about the danger of the drugs and how it is influencing our families and uh, many other experiences. Next slide, please. Ah, back, okay. So uh, this, was, uh, this was the basic introduction about what is it uh, role-playing, what is it LARP. I will give you, uh, sorry, uh, we wanted to have this, so we are having a common background. So we know what we are talking about. Uh, do you have any question about this part? I could have a question. Okay, this what I didn't is the expect. Biggest, what is the biggest LARP you have played, both you and uh, Francesco? Players and time-wise. Mm. Uh, I've been uh, once in uh, Conquest of Mythodia, that is one of the most popular and famous LARP in the world. And uh, I think in that uh, occasion, uh, uh, at least a thousand, a thousand thousand people have been gathered. Wow. So we are talking about uh, uh, 12,000 people between uh, uh, among the staff and players. So wow. it was a huge uh, gathering. And it was of, uh, and it's one of the most uh, big ones. Uh, some of some, some LARPs can count just uh, I don't know, 10 people, but uh, some others, uh, they can be really huge. Yes. You mean uh, it lasted uh, right? five, uh, five days. It lasted. Excuse you me, 1,200 people, 1,200 people, not 12,000. No, no, 12,000 people. 12,000? Yeah, it's a lot. Conquest of Mitodia. Uh, there are a few more. Uh, that can count a few thousands, but Conquest is uh, the biggest, I think. Uh, Bicolin in Canada is uh, one of the, another one, very interesting one. Uh, but uh, yes, I think Conquest is uh, the biggest. Thank I'm you. reading the chat. Do you improvise the lines on the spot? Uh, yes, as, uh, as Voita said, uh, you have uh, some uh, coordinates of your characters, your motivation, fears, attitudes uh, in your mind before going to an LARP events. You have your clothes, your props, your uh, whatever you need. But uh, mostly, yes, uh, when you have the, the platform, like uh, the, this, this information, you then improvise them. And uh, it, at the beginning, it can be a bit challenging, uh, but uh, as soon as you enter the, the right mindset, uh, I can assure you it's uh, amazing and uh, it's really fun. And uh, as Boita said, uh, some uh, interesting scenarios can be portrayed uh, through LARPs and through role playings like drug addictions, uh, uh, romance, uh, comedy, comedy things. And so that's why this uh, this magic, let's say this feature, can be useful in educational field. Uh, 
how do you deal with doing magic during role playing of fantasy? Uh, do you mean during LARP? Okay, yes. So uh, during LARP, uh, there, there's um, the, a bit, uh, the theater of the mind regards the role playing game, the tabletop. But as uh, Francesco asked, uh, during LARP can be a bit difficult to portray a fireball because, of course, uh, it's difficult to portray something that is so dangerous. And LARP are supposed to take uh, safety into uh, a primary consideration. But uh, there are a few ways. Uh, they, um, it's about more of... Um, uh, in, in Italy, we, call, we could call them uh, fuochi d'artificio, like uh, fireworks things that you, that you, uh, you could use and uh, with some other um, uh, special effects uh, that can help you to portray uh, and to reenact what you are you saying. But of course, there are some limitations. Of course, you as a fantasy sorcerer, you cannot say, okay, uh, through my use of my power, you will fly. It, it, it's impossible, you know, to reenact that. But there are a few ways to reenact some magics, let's say. Boita. Yeah, I would like to add to this uh, two examples. So example from the action LARP where everybody was using sword, but we had uh, one guy who was the mage. He was mage because he was blind. So we wanted to give him some advantage and we gave him teddy bears. So he had 20 teddy bears, which, uh, in, which worked as 20 magical points. We gave him four specific uh, spells and he had to pay for every spell to use. So for example, if he ate one spell, sorry, uh, one teddy bear, which was one spell, he could cast a healing and heal one life to another player. If he ate 10, 10 magic points, 10 teddy bears, he could cast the maximum madness as he called it, which means everybody starts to attack everybody who is around. Etc. Etc. So it's very That's mechanical system. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, there is also another form of spells which is meant for creation of the atmosphere. So if I will take an example of this lark on a boat, on the day three we have been attacked by ghosts. How it happened practically? The organizers had a, a smoke screen, so the smoke started to go all around, and the organizers entered into the role with their faces painted white so they looked like spirits and it was more like this theatrical magic which supported us at the moment to create a proper atmosphere and of course uh, there are a lot of uh, smokes bomb or uh, some other special uh, effects that can be used like uh, i don't know how to translate in english sorry but there are a few things that you can throw on the ground uh, and they make some uh, explosion lights and you can use all those different items to portray the best you can uh, your kind of magic but the main rule normally is that uh, the in between all the LARPs uh, that you as a mage can portray some, uh, just the portrayable. You cannot uh, just transform uh, uh, somebody into, I don't know, a giant lizard because it's very impractical to do that on the moment, on the spot. So there are a few limitations in LARP, but, uh, but in the end, when you step into a LARP and you recognize some mages, uh, uh, they are kind of good. <laughs> it uh, can surprise you because it's not um, when there is, uh, in particular in the main events, the most popular events, uh, uh, people are kind of uh, uh, very, uh, um, very reflecting about uh, how to portray their skills and they in the end can reach uh, a really high level detail. It's a, it's a performance. It reminded me a lot when we were playing Jerevan Beast, which is a historical event from 16th century in France. Uh, there was this huge beast, something between bear and wolf, and the organizers took a guy who was big by himself. They put him into the bear costume that put a skull on his head, and when he entered in the middle of the night, the camp, everybody was shit scared. So there can be very like uh, physical things 
happening, creating good atmosphere. I will come back to the previous question. Do you improvise the lines on the spot? Um, I will draw a parallel to tabletop RPGs. In the LARP, most of the time, you are improvising the lines unless there is a scripted line for you, which is rare, but can happen. In the RPGs, tabletop RPGs, basically all you are doing is improvising. So improvisation is generally is one of the skills, competencies, which can be practiced greatly through this type of games. Uh, if we, you want to add something, Francesco? Um, just uh, asking if uh, there are many more any more questions. Because if not, I think that I can actually give Francesco the space now. Okay. So uh, role playing game is the big box inside of uh, if, if inside of we can find the uh, LARP. Uh, role-playing game, video games, uh, or uh, other uh, type of role-playing games we have been talked about, like uh, uh, play by chat or uh, uh, chamber room, LARP, uh, whatsoever. But the main point, the main focus of role-playing games is to portray a story. It's about um, storytelling. And uh, that's, I think, one of the most uh, important aspects, is the most uh, uh, the main one, uh, the stories um, kind of uh, shape us. Uh, they, uh, we are with them and they are with us from the be very beginning of our life when uh, uh, the people and the family or the friends in school, uh, it's the story in itself, uh, it's always been uh, uh, something really powerful. And uh, the role-playing games is just about having fun with it. But the story can portray a lot of things, uh, like uh, uh, Voita said, sci-fi stories, Victorian age, murder and investigation, or uh, I don't know, uh, colonization in alien world, uh, safari in Thailand or whatsoever. They can be very realistical, that can be uh, fantasy, uh, because uh, the story, of course, are just stories, uh, like uh, the novels, for example. Some novels are uh, about a fictional world, but some other uh, reenact some uh, some aspects, some worlds, uh, some places. They are kind of uh, really, really there. They are existing. Uh, so the the difference about uh, what exists and what doesn't exist uh, in the role playing games can be blurry and uh, it's kind of secondary actually because the the, ma the main point is about the story itself how it, how good is the story and how is it, it's engaging because if it is it can be uh, stay in our mind with uh, across a long time so uh, it, I don't know if uh, I, I noticed that most of you have uh, some experience in role playing games, so uh, you already know. But for the those who uh, have not uh, experienced uh, role playing games, um, the tabletop in particular, uh, it's uh, just like Boita said about uh, two main roles. The main one, uh, this the, the dungeon master, it's a kind of, uh, uh, just like Voida said, uh, uh, it's supposed to be an arbiter and it's supposed to be portray all the um, characters that surround the main uh, group that is, uh, that, that is based on the player. Because the player, the second role, are uh, about, they are supposed to be the protagonist of the story. And uh, um, the players normally uh, reenact one single character, their own. It's just an, like an alter ego in a TV show, like a protagonist of a, in a TV show. And uh, is um, probably uh, try to imagine like uh, this scenario. Try to follow me, uh, like low ceiling, crowded rooms, loud. Uh, together with the smell of fresh beer and stingy sweat. As soon as, as soon as you open the door and take a step forward, you're inside a small, yet cozy tavern, the sleepy basilisk. Your gaze searches for Mundungus, your friend and ally in town, but you notice something as soon as you find him in the dark left corner of the tavern, sitting on an oak barrel. 
the deeply scarred face of an outwork is now turned toward you. He doesn't seem particularly happy about your presence there. He stands up and leaves the table of his comrade with a knife held in his right hand and say, who are you, stranger? This is, for example, something the DM portrays. And then the DM left the, the role, the spotlight on the players. Boyd, I can, would you like to, to help me portray the, the player right now? So if Francesco is the dungeon master, the arbiter who just described this scene, and I'm the player, then I am having uh, my own character. I have crafted the character for myself with the help of the Francesco, and I am answering this orc who was so offended offensive towards me. So as a, as a character, I'm saying, I'm afraid I don't plan to leave immediately, but I can assure you, I will not harm anyone with my presence. We, no we don't need no stranger in town. Go where you came from. And then suddenly a voice, the background, enough. A loud voice suddenly interrupts the escalation of the right moment. The half orc freezes while waving his knife just in front of the elf. He is with me. The half orc throws a last furious gaze on the elf, but loses interest soon enough. You see Mandungus coming closer, fine clothes, richly carving runs on his walking stick of gray air. Good to see you, Delanar. It's been a while. As I told you in the letter, I have some work for you. So these guys is just like um, a, just a little scene. As you see, there there is the DM that talks and uh, reenact the environment and all the uh, uh, the non primary characters. But there is there is also a part in which, like Voida, for example, the player can uh, speak up for himself and uh, say whatever he or she thinks is uh, the most uh, needed in that moment. So this is uh, just a little portray. Do you have uh, any question about this? There is actually a question in the discussion. You can check it. Oh, cool. Is it similar to the foreign theater in the sense there is a mediator? Someone uh, uh, you gives guidelines and direct the problem solving situation. Uh, I mean, in the uh, tabletop role playing game, so in this kind of things, there, there is this role, the DM, that it's the arbiter, but also uh, can be, um, um, it's, it's a multitask role, actually. It does a lot of things, but the main points is that he direct the spotlight toward the players. In, he describes all the surrounding at the beginning and then ask normally to the player what do you what are you going to do what do you want to do in this moment like for example in the uh, in the example of the alfork the aggressive guy who, who, who ask uh, who are you stranger and uh, at the beginning try to imagine to be the elf just that just stepped into the tavern what would you do in that case what would you answer so that's the story that's unfolding. Me, the DM, I don't know what you're gonna do. I don't know what you're gonna reply and how, but the story unfolds precisely in that way. I hope I answered you. Uh, maybe I can try to add to this. Uh, forum of the theater as let's say some uh, educational aspects it's focused also on some uh, learning of the morality what is the right thing to do at the moment role-playing games are not uh, holding in themselves this like morality rules at least not by default i know many of the people who enjoyed playing role-playing games because they can act as assholes they can play robbers they can play killers and many other things uh, i confirm <laughs> yeah uh it is a um, special experience by itself. We can be talking about the different therapeutic aspects, but it's not important at the moment. Uh, what's the biggest power of the role playing and LARP is that people are being someone they are not. They are entering completely different mindset. 
they are entering completely different experience something what the real world is basically real world cannot provide you this only the storytelling can only the role playing only the LARP. and that's what's the unique power of this sort of activities uh, and uh, yeah when we are talking about having a group of youngsters who are very eager about playing a bank robbers it's not a very educational message by itself but we are still having different tactics and approaches how to how to extract education from this but about this we will be talking more in the following webinars back to francesco and intrinsically uh, every story uh, can be really interesting because uh, it, uh, it's about a lot of different capability and skills. Just the fact that, uh, I don't know, uh, five, six uh, teenagers can cooperate toward the, a mission, in that case, uh, bank robbing or whatever, is just something that it's not really obvious for some uh, teenagers. And, uh, you know, there can be a lot of um, uh, aims, a lot of purposes. And uh, by the end of the day, uh, one of the key points that's, that's, is that role playing is fun. And that fun can be a motivational, can be something that pushes you towards something. So it's a uh, very interesting tool. So, I, uh, any questions so far? What do you think about LARP or um, role playing game? This is actually the moment when we are entering the QA part. So if you are already having some questions which are related to this webinar, you can either say them out loud or you can also share them in the in the chat. Or maybe if you are having something, uh, some questions which are connected to something what is coming in the future, you can also share with us uh, what would you like to get out of these webinars. So we can also adjust the content of the following webinars to your needs. So, can there be a main goal, final outcome for the LARP, or is it always in pro? Uh, good answer, good, good question. So, uh, there is a goal, actually. Normally, there is, um, uh, in Italy, we call it canovaccio, that is a, a theatrical lexicon. It's supposed to be uh, something like this. Uh, you know where the story, uh, where the story origins, so begins from point A, let's say, and goes through point B. So uh, this is kind of the same of LARP, like in a fantasy, uh, let's say, for example, the uh, LARP Voita uh, joined the, the ship, uh, the one with the pirate thing. Uh, uh, it will probably uh, say the same, but in that case, in that uh, scenario, there is a plot, there is something happening by default, because uh, the stuff and uh, the, the LARP has been created around it. But then all the little details, all the things that uh, actually have been embodied from the players uh, are unknown. So uh, when you uh, join a LARP, uh, you will feel the sensation that something is moving. But if you want to step forward and, uh, and try to ask, oh, what's happening over there? Uh, is, is, is there something I can do to, to inform myself? And then you step forward, uh, then something happens because uh, uh, the mechanism is already in act, but you can uh, join it. You can feel part of it. Uh, I, I don't know if I answered you, hopefully. I will try to add something to this. Yes, uh, sure. First of all, when we are talking about the goal in LARP and also actually in RPG, 
every player, every characters they are playing is having their own motivation, their own personal goal. So in action LARP, the motivation of the character can be simply slaughter everybody from the enemy's army, or it can be earn 50 pieces of gold, uh, but it can be also to become a king of the, of the other, other tribe. Uh, in the more dramatic LARP, it can be the motivation of the character can be marry some other character or to revenge for the murder of his father or to discover who is the killer from the group of the people who have gathered there. So these are like personal goals for every, every player. And uh, it can be that the group has the same goal, the common goal. It can be that every player has their individual goal. And then there is also uh, something that's called Jeeps. It's a specific form of LARP, which is much more scripted than is normal. I have experienced a Jeep game, which was uh, retelling a story of the French uh, decadence. And it was a LARP, which was happening in six chapter. It was about the real guy, a real artist. I don't remember his name, who lived a hundred years ago or something and uh, who committed suicide. And we knew this, we knew it from the very beginning of the game. Uh, still, there has been six chapters. We as a players has been uh, playing our roles in each of these chapters. And even though that uh, we had some predefined lines, we had some predefined roles, and we knew what is coming in the end, there was still a lot of improvisation inside of the journey, which led us to that point. So every, every game was a unique experience. I have talked with the organizer of the game afterwards. He told me that basically, uh, even though that it's all coming to the same end, every game is different. And it always depends on the players who are there on the spot. Back to Francesco. Francesco, your microphone is muted. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so I'm just reading uh, another question. At some point, will you show us a sample, a video, for example? So uh, we actually, I think we shared a video about uh, a role-playing game about Stranger Things. Uh, uh, but uh, of course, we can, uh, I can share with, uh, with the chat some more videos, some more reference you can, uh, you you can check to have an idea. Uh, but just for you to know, for the people, role-playing games are, are those kind of things that uh, even though we talked about it for hours, it's not the same. I mean, it, there are kind of, uh, it's needed to try because to really understand it. Because uh, I don't know if some of the audience here can say the same, but for me, it's been something uh, like this. And a lot of people that I know before entering the role-playing game world, uh, even though we talked about a lot, they they still didn't have a clear idea, of course, because it's it, it's it's part of it. But uh, the, the the last thing I'd like to uh, I'd like to say is that um, just if you have the chance, just try it. Just uh, follow the chance because uh, it's a very uh, it's very interesting and, and it probably it will be enlightening for you to understand better this world. I would uh, add to this uh, just some data we are having uh, already in hands. Uh, we have been making research or more specifically, my partner has been doing research about what impact uh, does role-playing games and LARP are having on people. And uh, the answers she collected, people are saying that thanks to role-playing and LARP games, they have uh, gained confidence, they have learned communication skills. Uh, some of them are even saying that they are managed to handle their previous trauma, uh, things like that. Uh, so as mentioned before, LARP can be therapeutic, LARP can be eye-opening, uh, it can also teach you many different skills. Uh, I guess that the main uh, difference in between LARPs and educational LARPs is the intention. In the educational LARPs we know that we want to teach through them and we are busy with how to do it effectively. We are busy with how supporting the players uh, how supporting their awareness that they are learning something. Uh, just, uh, just last thing, I just put on the chat a uh, link about uh, Conquest of Mythodia, the LARP I was talking about. 
this is a trailer uh, about uh, 2018 uh and uh yes if you want to check it you will have an idea of the larp i was talking about but also a proper larp this is a high level larp and it's uh maybe interesting for some of you well let's still give a little bit more time for more question and if there will be no question we will move to the final point Yes, because otherwise you will hear us to death. <laughs> this <laughs> an awful scenario. If you have some question, we can, you know, have a chat. Well, uh... If people are still, maybe somebody is writing. Uh, for the ones who are interested in the games in general, uh, I can recommend these two resources, uh, old books from the old philosophers, which I'm sharing in the chat right now. This can give you more understanding on what's the difference between the play and the game and how does it influence uh, us as a humans in society in general. Good books. Hmm. And uh, I think that I will ask Elias to turn on the sharing of the screen again and put there the last slide. Yep, just give me a second. No. Hmm. Is it fine now? Hmm. Yes. Something appears. Good. So, as we told you, we are having and um, voluntarily assignments, uh, which are going to be like which are offered to you. Uh, they are here to support your learning experience. They will be building upon one another. And the first assignment is focused on the target group you are working with. Um, as we are talking about the role-playing games and LARP in education, we are build, we are working with assumption that you are having some people around you you want to educate. Either if it's your peers, maybe you are a teacher and you want to use it in school, maybe you are a scout leader and you would like to try this technique, maybe you just want to try it with your friends and see what it can bring. Whatever is okay, this is just for your awareness on how to work with it more practically. And it starts with awareness about who is my target group, with whom I am preparing this game. So uh, your first task, your first assignment is to describe this target group you are working with. What is their age? What is their needs? What are the problems these people are facing in life? And try to brainstorm and really only brainstorm how you can answer those needs through usage of the LARP, or role-playing activities. We have a template for you. So the template uh, can be downloaded from this, uh, this link. It's accessible. Everything is explained there one more time, but basically download this template, fill it for yourself and upload it to the Facebook group, which Ilias had already shared with you. And uh, our next speakers are going to evaluate uh, or not evaluate, review, review your answers. And at the beginning of the next webinar, they are going to come back to this topic. They are going to address uh, whatever you are there because the target group is where it starts. The people we are playing with are always influencing the whole context of the game. As I have mentioned before, the same LARP is always different with the different players, different target group. And once again, this is voluntarily. If you don't feel like doing it, it's fine. You can still join for the next webinar. Mm. Yeah, I think that's it for now from our side. So Elias Francesco, do you want to add something? Uh, not really, but I noticed uh, there is uh, another question. Uh, I'm going to read it. Are you looking for people to join your campaign? And are we going to play any one shot of D&D? &D? Who knows? Who knows? Not, not at the moment, Mada. Uh, 
we can arrange something. We like to indulge in role play, as you said. <laughs> but yeah, um, as, as for that, as for the last thing, um, as Voita said in the beginning, we are planning a training course uh, on LARP and to test all the tools that we have created in this, um, in this project during the last year that we've been working on it. So in September, you will have the chance and lots of people will have the chance to join uh, us in Italy, uh, close to Rome, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, um, exactly. Yes, for, uh, for some LARP action. And people that participated in the webinars, like you, will definitely have priority to participate in uh, this project. Of course, everything is going to be uh, paid. Accommodation, transportation and food is provided by uh, the Erasmus Plus program. And uh, yeah, it's uh, also a very nice opportunity for us to meet um, face to face and not online after, uh, in front of a screen. <laughs> so feel, feel free to join us on September. You will find us. And uh, we are working on uh, very interesting activities that can be used uh, both just to have fun and to learn how to dive into role-playing games and LARP, but also uh, as an educational tool. So it can be very interesting to a lot of people, I guess. Good. Thank you for joining today. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, the next webinar is coming in two weeks from now on. And you are going to see our colleague Christian from Germany. And if you are having any questions which you are not putting here, uh, there, is, uh, there is our email inside of the platform. So feel free to still write us any personal question. We will do our best to answer them. And that's it for now. Take care, people. Also, you can use this um, the Facebook group to write all these questions or how discuss things or open a discussion with uh, like-minded people. And uh, you will be hearing from uh, from me on the emails. Also, you will receive an evaluation form for this webinar. Is it is that right, Voita? That's right. Yes, we would be very, very grateful if you can um, just fill it up. It's not going to take long. Like it's a one or two minute thing, I guess. And yeah, thank you very much for joining today. Hope to see you again in two weeks. Bye, everybody. Thank you for everything and your patience. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>